We're going to be working around fuel here, so we want to take some basic safety precautions. Make sure you work in a well-ventilated area with no source of ignition nearby, which would be hot water heaters or incandescent shop lights. As always, you want to be wearing safety glasses when you're working on your vehicle, but now might be a good time to also get some chemical-resistant gloves. Most importantly, have a properly rated and fully charged fire extinguisher handy and know how to use it. As always, when working with fuel, and most times when working with the car, you want to be working on a cold engine. Begin by opening the hood and locate the fuel rail that runs down the top of the engine. At the rear of the fuel rail, you will see the fuel regulator, yellow arrow. Towards the front of the fuel rail, you will see the fuel dampener, green arrow. At the very front of the rail, you will see a metal cap, red arrow. On the 16 valve cars, it's located on the side of the fuel rail between intake runners 1 and 2. Use a 19 millimeter wrench and remove the cap on the end of the fuel rail, red arrow. There is a metal ball bearing in the end of the rail, red arrow. Do not lose this as you remove the cap. It is absolutely necessary when you're reinstalling the cap to seal the rail. Some gas may escape when you remove the cap, so be prepared for it with a shop towel or a small plastic container to catch the fuel that spills. Attach your fuel pressure gauge to the end of the rail, red arrow. You are going to want to jump the relay so you can test the pressure without starting the motor. If the engine is not running, you do not want to keep turning the motor over and pumping gasoline into the cylinders to perform this test. Remove the fuse relay panel, red arrow. On older cars, it is located inside the vehicle under the dash, and on newer cars, it is located in the rear left side of the engine compartment. Locate and remove the fuel pump relay, red arrow. You're going to want to jump terminals 30 and 87B. The terminals should be clearly marked on the bottom of the relay. While you can directly jump the two terminals by running a direct shielded wire between them, I like to make a jumper that includes a fuse, red arrow, to prevent damage to the electrical system, and a switch, green arrow. The switch will give you more control over the testing. If you jump the terminals directly, the pump will start immediately and stay on. With the relay jump, the fuel pump should start. With the engine stopped and the relay jumped, you should have 2.5 bar of pressure, plus or minus 0.2 bar, on all 8 valve 944 and 944 turbo motors. The 16 valve motor should have 3.8 bar, plus or minus 2 bar, yellow arrow. Remove the relay jumper, reinsert the relay, and start the motor. With the engine at idle, you should have 2 bar of pressure, plus or minus 0.2, on all eight valve motors, red arrow, and 3.3 bar of pressure, plus or minus 0.2 bar on all 16 valve motors, yellow arrow. Substantially higher pressure is usually a problem with the pressure regulator, and substantially lower pressure is usually a problem with the fuel pump or filter. You also want to check your leak down pressure. Stop the motor and let it sit for 20 minutes. Check the static pressure after 20 minutes. You should have 2 bar of pressure, plus or minus 0.2 bar, on all 8 valve motors, red arrow, and 3 bars of pressure, plus or minus 0.2 bars, on all 16 valve motors. Anything substantially less could be a problem with your check valve and result in poor hot start or vapor lock problems. After testing, make sure to properly reinstall the fuel rail end cap and ball and clean up any spilled fuel. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.